I'm going to smile and I'm going to say hi and I'm going to start talking. I think we might be live. Um, we're delayed today. Okay. Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Everything is back going how it's supposed to. Um, I have tea. <laughs> Easy tea. Um, I pretty much always have a cup of tea on my desk. I can tell you that. <clears throat> I really need it today. I am a little late because I started to make this card for you. And I had started it actually yesterday because, hey, I was, you know, planning ahead. And, uh, but then I decided, oh, I, I'd like a different variety for like a specific reason. So then I started making different samples for it. And then I thought, well, I like the skinny border, but some people like the thicker border. So I started making, and then the math. Oh, good Lord. Uh, so then I did that. So then when I realized I better, I better start like wrapping this up and getting ready to go live. As soon as that thought entered my head, I thought, oh no, I had the nerve to move my camera yesterday for our prize wheel. If you were there watching yesterday, you saw the prize wheel. <laughs> Um, so then I thought, oh, I'm going to have to reset my camera. And then when I turned on my whole setup, um, the, the face cam was working properly for the face cam, but it took the exact same in image, flipped it over, and put it on the desk version. And the camera for the desk version wasn't even turned on yet. So I don't know how that one thought to be that. Anyways, so <clears throat> we're gonna, I'm going to show you all the bits and pieces, and then we're going to partially make one card today. <laughs> I'm going to show you the important part of it. Um, because probably by the time I get that far, I will be talked out. Yes, it does happen. I do get talked out. So, hello, everybody. Welcome to Show and Tell with Tracy. It is uh, Tuesday, January 11th. Um, I am in season two now, which conveniently enough, that just worked for me that um, I started doing all my social media type stuff uh, in 2021. And so I thought, well, I have to be able to track these things. So I thought, well, it would be season one. And I'm like, well, when would season one end and season two begin? Because other than, you know, a week here and there or holidays or whatever, in holidays, some of the stuff I can pre-schedule because I'm getting good at that now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what, when would be the season break, right? I grew, up in, I grew up in the time when TV started in September. It ended in May. It was off for the summer. Uh, you didn't have all these different series starting at different times. You didn't have streaming services. So basically, you had things to watch in the winter, which you pretty much... For most of what I remember of childhood, you had to actually watch at the time because if you missed them, you just missed them. Um, and then nothing in the summer, but that was okay because you're outside playing all the time anyways. So now I can do all sorts of things. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do? And then I thought, you know what, I'll just do it by year. And conveniently enough, season one, 2021. Season two, 2022. So there you go. That's the big secret. Season two just means 2022. And so if I'm doing this 10 years from now, I hope to be then it, uh, I guess season 11 will be 31. I don't know. I'm sure I'll figure something out by then. I'll just be so much smarter. We'll have replaced it with who knows what by then. I'll just think the thoughts and they'll pop into your head. That's what's going to happen. Okay. So I put in my little calendar. Do you guys see the calendar at the top of my uh, Facebook page? My paper pusher page has a little weekly schedule in there. And I put tri-panel card, or I might have a tri-panel fun fold. I'm not actually sure what I wrote. Key break. So you're probably thinking, well, that's a lovely card. And I don't know if you watched uh, or looked, I guess it was both. I, when I did my prize video, I did a little teaser for my Monday challenge, but um, I also posted the picture afterwards. So this is one of the cards I had thought of for my Monday challenge. The picture I posted with the little table, quilted table runner on it. This is what it made me think of, just like three bright patterns of DSP. So here's a sneak peek at one of the cards. There'll be more for Friday, but here's one of them. So this is the first one I thought of. And yeah, it's a cool card. And I, I uh, forgot to get little black or little white inserts to go in the middle. So definitely if you're making a card with a black card base, put some white in the middle so people can write on it and then be able to read it. So yeah, this is just a traditional card, right? A very cool one, if you ask me. I, I like how it turned out. This is the... Uh, Friendly Hello DSP that you get as part of the DSP stamp set um, with Celebration when you buy $120 worth of stuff. So <clears throat> you get to buy a bunch of other things in the process of getting this paper, but oh my goodness, it is just phenomenal paper. Uh, I'm actually going to remember to post the pictures of the cards I made last night. My friend does a Mystery Monday, 
and I play every night. And then I realized last night, I never post a card for everybody to see, but I use this paper last night too. I just love it. So this is a card with three panels of DSP on it, but it's just a regular card. This card underneath is a tri-panel one fold card. And you say, well, Tracy, that looks a lot alike. It does until you go to open it. Duh. And again, I did the same thing. <laughs> I forgot the paper in the middle. I'm going to put this here for now. So as you'll notice, it's like it's a locking card. And I did make one slight error in judgment by leaving those very long tails, but that's okay. Uh, but is that not the coolest thing ever? I love these cards. I saw them years ago. Somebody had made one. And they're, yeah, just three different panels, and then they just sort of interlock. I know. Oohs and ahs abound. So this was what I meant when I said a tri-panel fun fold. And I'm probably going to end up, I guess the, whoever the person you give this to is going to get annoyed with those and end up cutting those short. Um, either that or maybe I'll, maybe I'll just you know, position them like that so they're nice and long like I like and just put a little glue behind so they don't keep getting locked in. So anyways, that's what we're making. Woohoo, tri-panel card. So, and, and you'll notice there is the one kind of difference in just general appearance. I just put these three pieces on one background piece. Whereas on this card, there are three separate panels. So I guess you could choose to shimmy everything together and not have a, I, as soon as I said shimmy everything together, hi Lynn. Um, some of you will get that, most of you won't. Um, <clears throat> but you do see little bits of the black in between the layers, which I kind of like. I think it, it's actually pretty cool. And I could have done the same thing here. I could have made three separate layers and taped them down. But in the case of this card, I was actually trying to go with more white because that was more like the picture. Hello, Bernice, thank you very much. I know this paper, ooh, I've said it before, um, with Stampin' Up, the DSP does all the work. And lots of times I've die cuts and all sorts of other things. But this time I did actually keep it pretty simple. <laughs> so, um, but I'm gonna show you how you make what? Tri-fold card. I'm going to keep doing that because it's fun. Um, this is why when you make fun fold cards, you need to use um, stronger adhesive because you can't help but play with them. Honestly, you just can't. <laughs> That's just how it is. Okay, so the card base. It is actually a standard card base. Just going to off screen now. For some reason here, my face cam is very low today, and it's driving me a little nuts. So I'm, believe it or not, I'm doing this while you watch. That's right. <laughs> Look at me go. Okay. So I'm going to give you um, just a little, hey, this is what Tracy does with cards. So this is a standard card, right? You take a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and you cut it in half at the five and a half mark. So this is five and a half. And then when you fold it in half, this is four and a quarter, right? So this is your standard card base. And this is how most demonstrators, most people cut them. This is how most people expect to use a card. Now the card can go portrait, and I've got all this background, portrait, or it can go landscape, right? Now I like my cards to stand. So when the person who gets them, because I do notice that people do like to save cards, right? And you like to look at them a little bit, regardless of who makes them. So I like my cards to stand. So I tend to cut my cards I take the eight and a half by 11 and I cut it up in half at the four and a quarter mark. So if I'm doing a portrait card, it is it will it will also tent, right? It's just long and skinny. Now I've also seen people use cards cut this way, this way. And there are lots of fun folds actually that involve cutting your card this way to start with and then cutting pieces off or folding it or storing it in different places. So whichever half you're using, there's lots you can do with it. So what you want to do is you want to start with the traditional fold, right? So we're going eight and a half by five and a half, but do not score it in the middle like a standard card base. Instead, we are going to score, you can't see it on here, but we are going to score each side. Well, you can't see the score lines because I chose navy, which was a great idea. Um, you're going to score each one two and an eighth of an inch in from the edge. But don't worry about measurements. Because if you can see, I told you I did a lot of math to make this work. Here's all the math. So when I do my blog post this week, I will put all those different dimensions and lots of pictures. Um, for now, just this is how they go together. So you're going to do each at two and an eighth. 
Now, what you're going to do is you're going to fold one side and you're going to burnish it really well. You don't need to have a bone folder, this bone folder. Mine is well loved, as you can see, because the logo is just about rubbed right off it. You don't need a bone folder for a lot of things. I like to have a bone folder, but for certain things like this where you want a really good crease, bone folders are the way to go. So here's what I recommend. This card, so I folded one over and I gave it a really good burnish. It's right, because you want this to lay flat and it will lay flatter once the panels are on it. If it doesn't lay 100% flat, I'm not sure if you could make it, but so I have another score line here. So I know roughly where my score line is. But before I completely fold it over and burnish it all, I want to make sure, and again, I really should have picked lighter colors or add some white. These are the wrong size, but they'll, they'll do it a pitch. Um, I needed to cut more of the, the bigger size of my white layers. Okay, so you want to make sure that your cards meet. You don't want too big of a gap, but at the same time, you don't want them overlap because when you overlap them, they'll just make it a little trickier to, to do it. So here's how I find. I fold it on the score line, but then I'm going to put these two together. I'm going to line them up. And I'm going to hold, put a grip on it, as my dad would say anytime I help them with any kind of carpentry. My job is to hold things, so put a grip on it. Um, he still does say that, actually, and he still does make fun of me for not being able to read a level, which way is up and down. Um, okay, so I've lined them up now, and it's a little bit hard for you to see, but I've got them lined up so that there's just like one thirty-second of an inch in between them. And then I'm gonna kind of push out and I'm gonna pull down with my bone folder. So as I'm doing this, because the score line is a little bit thicker, it's probably a 16th of an inch thick. Um, it, can, it can shift a little bit one way or the other. So instead of just automatically folding it over and having, having it shift where it overlaps or where it leaves a white gap, I, I, there's not a lot of this seam that you can see, but still you wanna avoid the white gap if you can. Um, and then and then squeeze it. So by kind of lining it up, and it's not perfect because it's never going to be perfect, not with cuts or score lines. But you can see at the top it's actually pretty good. But at the bottom it's just it's just a hair off, and you can see just a little bit. But it's not going to matter. The important part is the card is going to open where you want. So then we're going to put on layers. Now here here's where the math went, just went <laughs> Go crazy. So here I'm going to use some different samples till we get to the right one. So when I saw this card the first time, it was made with three equal sized pieces. Here's, here's the other trick <clears throat> trick I'm going to show you, or tip I'm going to show you. I guess it's not really a trick. Um, when you're lining them up, whether you're putting them together or just lining them up to see what you want to do, put one layer on. None of this is glued down yet, but put one layer on, put a block on it. Because one block will hold this card shut and will keep it from flipping your paper everywhere. <laughs> as you try to line things up and decide what it is you want to do. And actually, I have a smaller block that came in one of the kits that I need to use because it won't take up as much space. You can barely tell it's there, so it won't screw up what you guys are looking at. So this is how I saw the original card made. It had three equal size panels, right? And they're just, they're just um, there is an eighth of an inch all around the edge, and then there's a little bit less than an eighth of an inch in the middle. Now, as you can see, every time I tap this thing, it goes crazy. But like I said, one block is holding it pretty good. Um, if you noticed on the sample card I showed you, this is a little bit bigger. Now I made this, so I made the other card and I was just making different sizes because I thought it was more interesting. And I was, on the other card, I was trying to capture the bird in the right spot too. So if your paper is directional, you want to factor that in. Mostly because the card I saw in my head, once I made that card, which made me think of this card, which made me have a great idea for another card, because that's how it works. <laughs> so the reason I wanted these panels to be different sizes is because the card I was going to finish today, which I didn't get that far, but I will post the final one afterwards. I wanted to be able to use these gates. So the way these dies work, these are the new oh, horizon dies to go with this awesome paper. So the way these gates work, I gotta, oh, there we go. So when you put the gates on like this, like you cut two die cuts. I don't think I have that right. There we go. Now I got it right. Um, and, it, and it gives it, it the depth that it kind of looks like you have gates coming in. So I wanted to do that, but the gates, if I cut everything exactly the same, so like three equal patterns, these gates were going to be too big for the one layer. So I needed one layer to be different. So that's how the whole thing started. So I decided, well, I can make the layers whatever I want. I can, it's my card. I can do whatever I want. 
So that's where I made, okay, I just need one bigger. So I'll make one bigger and I'll just have the two on the other side. So that involves some math. Cause the thing is you can't just take one thing cause you got to factor in all of the edge pieces and the edges around and also like I said, math. So if you notice on these pieces, I'm going to pick it up. This is how I prefer my layers to go. I prefer my layers, oops, that doesn't work, to have a 1 16th border around them, which means the difference between my two layers is an eighth of an inch. So if I cut one at two inches, I cut one at one and seven eighths, which is an eighth of an inch less. So that when you split the difference, it's 1 16th. I do not try to remember all this stuff. Um, Tamara, I wish you were on because I could I could talk in Tamara talk and say, um, do you want one tick or two ticks? <laughs> so a tick is a is a sixteenth. In this case, this is a thicker border, which is when when I first started seeing cards being made, a lot of them this was the standard like border around them. So the difference between these two pieces is a quarter inch, which leaves an eighth of an inch around all the edges. Now the difference between these two is, I mean, the big difference is. They look different, right? One has more border, one has less. But from a practical standpoint, the other difference is there's the, the thicker border is more forgiving. If your card pieces are not cut exactly square, and let's face it, whose are cut exactly square every time, this is a little more forgiving in letting you put your piece down and get it how you want it and get it as even as you can. The ones I use, <laughs> I have sometimes had, if, it, if it's not cut straight, then, and you get even just the littlest bit askew, then you're gonna be really, you can get really close to the edge really quickly. And you don't have a lot, like you can trim things up, even on the bigger one, you can always trim it down if you want to, but on the smaller one, you don't have nearly as much play. That said, it's still my preference and it's still the one I use most of the time. So what I did then, because I had all these ideas of what I wanted to do. So then what I did is I made templates because I thought, well, I'm gonna have to tell you guys the sizes, right? So if you use it even, like three even panels, I made the measurements for uh, having a thin border and I made the measurements for having a thick border. And then I was trying to figure out how to write it out. And I decided the easiest thing to do would be to make the pieces and take pictures of them and write on them. So I made like all the panels. So, so I have a thick set and I have a thin set of equal. And then, I made the set that I wanted to use for my card, which was the one where, where it has, that's the wrong one, where it has one set. I'm gonna take that out for now because that's my card I'm gonna use. Uh, I'll use a different color. I just realized I have this sitting here. Um, got all my sets together. So then I decided I would make you a set of cards like the, like the sample card with the birds, where it's, here's a thick border, and here is the two. Now you'll see by the card we're about to make, I, I put the thick one in the middle, or the like the wider one in the middle, and then I put the two other ones on either side. You know what, you don't have to. And for the card I'm gonna do, I'm not going to. And I guess we're just gonna figure out how it looks. So I made this, and then I made another set with the thin border. So I had those measurements. So seriously, this is the rabbit hole I went down this afternoon. <clears throat> and I, I should have done more last night, but that was a rabbit hole. So then, because yep, that's how Tracy's brain works. So then I thought, well, if they're going to be different sizes, like instead of having the big one in the middle, what if you have the big one at the bottom? And what if they got bigger as you went? Now, this was the hardest <laughs> I would admit, because I couldn't, I had to like take a little bit off and take a little bit on and then account for the middle. And you know, we'll do it this way. So what I did is it's almost like the ombre right where it, it goes down and you could use different papers to make it ombre that was part of my you know and when i have more time to play who knows how many cards i will come up with using this particular pattern so like i said <laughs> a block will save your mind when you're doing this so then i made the gradient ones so i made one that had the biggest on the bottom and i guess you could do this the other way around too um, um medium and then the skinny one so I think the options are yours. I, I would imagine if you really wanted to, you could do five skinny layers, right? Instead of three panel, make it five. I'm pretty sure you could do that. So then I made this. And of course, because it's me, I also made a set of these <laughs> where it had the skinny border. 
So you can have the skinny border going. Yeah. So these are all the measurements that will be on my blog this weekend. So do not try to write any of this stuff down or keep track of my math or 16th and 18th and or 16ths and eighths and whatever. But these are cool cards. And quite honestly, when I started, I hadn't figured out what if I was going to make a, a particular card with this or not. These were just happened to be the colors I grabbed that were on my desk. And so I was using the samples. But this soft suede with the crumb cake and the white, I love it. Now I just have to figure out what stamp set goes best with it because it's kind of sepia ish, old fashioned. So I think it might end up being some kind of a tone on tone thing because I like those colors. But I digress. Options, many options. What we're going to do today is we're going to do the bigger one. And the reason I didn't do, because I'm not going to put them in the same order I did before. I said, there's a lot of thought went into this card. <laughs> you think about how many different things sp spiraled through my head as I tried to come up with this. Because um, in my head, I have these New Horizon dies and these New Horizon paper is going to make the most perfect cards. And wouldn't it be cool if I kind of split it up? In the art world, I believe it's called a triptych. When you take three pictures that sort of go together, but are three separate pieces, so they have space between them. Look at me in part and some culture. So when I decided to do this, I decided that this card needed to go down this way with the big one on the bottom and the two small ones on top. Now, the reason I didn't do the, the gradiated, gradiated, I'm not actually sure that's the right word. The one where that's like those small, medium and large was because even with this, this was cutting really close into, uh, sorry, not that one. The dies were cutting into what I wanted it to be, right? So this one was gonna be a tight fit on here and then the next one was gonna be a tight fit and I thought the dies would look too crowded on those particular dimensions. So I revisited the card a bit and just made sure that I picked the biggest space on the bottom that I could so that these gates, which I keep doing backwards. See, the problem is the dies go this way. So if I would keep putting the dies the right way, it'd be better. Um, so that I had the biggest space possible to make the gates look as good as possible. So that's why I picked these. And then I showed you this paper before. And believe it or not, I have already put it away, which is it's phenomenal for me. Uh, so I only have one sheet of it up, but it's all this watercolor. There are six by six pieces um, and there's all these different watercolor, but they, they just, I mean, you, you just, you see a, you see a scenery right off the bat. So they don't need very much to amp them up. So my plan was that I was going to have the bottom, which was going to be my gates. And here's a little bit grayer and I haven't quite decided if there might end up being some sand dunes or something on it. And then we had sort of the, the distance, which was going to have little cabins on it. And then the sky and the sky panel was where I was going to put the, the sentiment. Now you can stamp straight onto this. I mean, maybe not right here where the ink is the darkest, but right, you could stamp right onto this or on here. So I haven't decided if I'm going to stamp right on or put a layer or who knows. Um, the, the beauty of having options is if you stamp the first time and it doesn't quite work, put a layer over top of it and stamp again. So one of the things you're going to want to factor in, and when I put the when I put the dimensions on, I wrote at the top here, and it'll it'll be explained as such, as the size of your image before you cut it into strips. Now, for the purpose of this card, it didn't really matter. I cut three different pieces of DSP and I cut them three different sizes. So it didn't really matter where in the DSP I cut. Although I will tell you that I cut this, I cut a, a two inch strip to put here. And it just so happened that this bird was like right perfectly in it. So I'm like, this is awesome. So I actually cut this little chunk because I'm actually out in the middle of the 12 inch strip because I wanted this bird the way he was. Now, this other piece that was also in the same two inch strip, uh, part of the reason I decided, I decided to put it between the lines anyways, but that I've decided to put this right here because this bird was going this way and there's a bird right below it that is actually going the other direction. So even if I tried to use this this way, this bird's up, this one's upside down. And if I went this way, there's one up, one upside down. It's the weirdest little layout thing. So I decided to use a chunk. And again, I had little pieces on each end so when you, if it matters where you're cutting in the DSP, and in this case, I'm going to use one piece of DSP and I'm going to cut the same piece into three strips and then split it like a triptych. So, oh, hello, Donna. So I, it does matter to me where it's going to go. So it's also the same, you can, so I'm using DSP, the, the original card and this card I'm using DSP. You could stamp those panels. Um, you could put embossed layers on those panels. You could put die cuts on those panels. You could do all sorts. Of, you could honestly, you could probably, 
um, especially with the one that's even, because I don't think it'll fit. So this one's this one just happens to be set up, but um, I don't think this layer is big enough. But our, that cool stamp set we have, I want to say it's called Biggest Wish. Oh my goodness, I got it right. Biggest Wish, where you could write like happy, 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 and then put birthday on a label. I mean, that's cool. You could just stamp sentiments on these layers, right? You could do all sorts of things. It just so happens that I'm using CSP for both the cards. I'm going to show you the name. Now, I don't have a fancy Donna ruler. I have a Tracy ruler, though. And I wrote that my name on there because I love this ruler because it has inches and centimeters. And whichever side you flip to has inches or centimeters. I probably had this ruler for 30 years. Um, and so I didn't want me to take it. My name is written on it in a shirt. Okay, so the reason it matters, and I like, again, I like the skinny borders. So I need this piece to be 4 and 11 16 by 3 and 7 8. <laughs> again. I will put all these measurements in the blog so you don't have to try to write them all down. But so the reason it matters is because if I go to four, so here's the easy way four, eight, 12 minus one. So this 11 16th is one tick shy. So one sixteenth shy of three, four and three quarters. So this is where my card's going to be. So depending on how I wanted to lay it out on my three pieces, and then on the other ones, like I said, it was super simple. This one, just because I'm trying to make this landscape work, it's a little more involved. It is actually a pretty simple card. But so this one, I want to make sure that when I cut my DSP, I don't end up like having to cut down the middle of this row because that's not what I want. So as it turns out, this is where my first cut's going to go. And I can tell because I'm looking at my layers on my card that my first cut's going to be here. My second one's going to be about here. My top one's going to be sky. So that's perfect. I'm just going to I'm just going to start from this corner and go in and start from this corner and go up. But if you were cutting a different one of these or uh, there's a gorgeous piece that's all sorts of greens and layers and then has like flowers at the bottom. If you wanted to make it a more darker, maybe, or just masculine or whatever, cut, get rid of the flowers, and you wanted to cut the bottom off, you got to make sure you shift your measurement. So if you are using, let's say, scenic DSP, then you're going to want to make sure that you um, lay it out a little bit before you cut it off so that you don't waste your DSP. Okay, so... Yes, I, I didn't actually, I like to try to have as much prep as possible so you don't have to watch me do the mundane things. But in this case, uh, I wanted to explain that part. So 4, 8, 12, 11. So there's my 4 and 11. Oops, I did some. Huh. Okay. Tracy should not talk and cut. That was five. Uh, this piece is actually supposed to be uh, 3 and 7 eighths. It's the other direction that's 4 and 11. Um, so I've got a couple extra strips, which is fine. I'll just use those on different cards. Okay, so my width is actually what is three and seven eighths. <laughs> Not to worry, I have several packages of this paper. But this is the piece that, wanted, that I wanted to be four and 11 sixteenths. And like I said, I had measured from the bottom so that I would have my strips proper, right? Like my strips are basically going to be like this, the bottom strip, the middle strip, this strip. So when you go to cut, make sure you're measuring up the right way. If I cut the other way, Chances are I'm screwing this up and my gates are going to block the best part of the DSP, which is to me this line. Okay, so four, four, eight, 12, 11. Okay, so there's where my four, 11, 16 is now that I'm paying attention. So this is, so this is my DSP that's going to go on the card. Now you'll notice that it looks like it's way too short. I'm just going to take this block out to lay flat. It looks like it's way too short on this card. And that's because each one of these strips is going to be matted up with a border in between. So it's meant to look this way. You didn't cut it wrong. It just, once it's mounted on all its individual strips, it will be the right size. And then again, <laughs> I really should stop talking while I cut because it is actually important to pay attention to the measurements when you are cutting it. So I'm going to pay attention, make sure I cut this the right way. I'm cutting my bottom one, which I pulled up at the end. I was going too fast, so I'm just going to use my scissors to trim it because I don't want to screw it up in the trimmer. Okay, so I cut my bottom strip off. Keep them in order, although most of the time you're going to be able to tell the order. And then, and I'm cutting these pieces for anybody who's trying to follow along. Uh, the the biggest strip on the bottom was two inches. And I'm going with the skinny border again. And these other two are going to be one and three eighths of an inch each. 
So these ones should be the same size. Not so let's gonna see what I did wrong there. Okay. So now we got we've got our strips and we've got our card. Now that it's a matter of laying it out. This is where you're gonna to want to put um, the block on again, just to make sure you got it the way you want it to. So I've got my top piece. Oops, I went off screen again, sorry. I've got my top piece and that's what I'm gonna put the block on. And even before you start gluing them down, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you just make sure you um, got them right out and you know where the spaces are, you know how the, it's gonna go. This one's gonna go next. And this one's gonna go first. And like I said, I wanted this, this the bottom one to be the biggest one. No, no, they're so awesome. Um, I have that block in the way, but you see how I just took those and voila, I've got my, they're, they're, not, they're not quite lined up, but I moved the top one with my finger as I did that. Um, but now when I put these awesome dies down with my fence on the bottom, which it, it, it looks at it, it looks dimensional with the way they have the curves going when I get it done properly. Uh, my fence on the bottom, and then it'll probably end up being these little houses, which are stuck to the thing really well. I can't pick up with one finger <laughs> or one hand. So these are my pieces. So now I know I need to um, just put all my strips together and lay it out. So I'm going to keep doing that for now, so it doesn't go popping everywhere. Now to glue your your, your layers to your cardstock. Oh, hello, Tamara. I'm not sure when you popped up there, but I just noticed you popped up there. Okay, so to glue your layers down, this is fine to just use snail, or sorry, seal, or I'm not sure which way I'm going, seal or um, the Tombow glue or whatever. It, it's this is this is the, um, the decorative part of the card. But I would say when it comes to putting, actually fixing this onto the piece, uh, you're gonna wanna use tear and tape or the seal plus or something, because as I showed you with the original card, once you pick it up, you cannot help yourself. You open and close, open and close, open and close, because that's what you do with fun folds. So I am going to use the, uh, the seal plus just because it's easier on the video. I know how much I love my tear and tape, but I thought it might be important for people to see that I do use something other than tear and tape. Seal plus will also work. Okay, so those are those two pieces are gonna go like that. And then this top one. And I have done something wonky with this top one. And I'm not sure what. I think when I cut the original piece, I cut the wrong one. Whatever did I do? I don't know. Okay. It's gonna work anyway, so I'm gonna put it on. Now, if you had decided that you were gonna stamp, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put a label on mine because that's how I roll. I'm gonna put some of those little pebbles. I'm very excited to use the little pebble embellishments. Um, I'm gonna use a layer or a, a layer, a label on mine. So I can put this right there. If you if you were gonna um if you were gonna stamp directly onto the DSP, I would do it before I layer like put all the layers together and put it on the card. Because in this case, the, um, the off cut piece would substitute in here. So if, if anything screwed up, you could always fix it. Okay, so there's my three pieces. I'll take my little mat over. Can't quite pick them up. So there's my little three pieces, my little trip. And like I said, my favorite part is this part in the middle. So when it's all said and done, I'm gonna have a sentiment on the top. I'm gonna have some little cabins or something. It might end up being trees, who knows. And then I'm gonna have the little gates and the pebbles down here. So I'm gonna de decorate this later because I know we're already on, going on half an hour here, but um, so now here's the other key. Remember when we opened our card and you went to open it, it went like this, right? I don't think you'd even notice. Donna, I'm not sure what you wouldn't notice. There's a bit of a delay and I have a hard time like paying attention to the comments once I get going. Um, probably the wonky top is what you wouldn't notice. Um, so this is how the card opens, right? So here's the key thing. And it's it, and it it sounds funny, but in a way it is it is um muscle memory and it's harder than you think the first time because I've already done it um 
on the cards before. I've made this card a couple times, but um, I've done it before. You're so used to like putting on layers and going around all four edges. Oh, the top piece, thank you. Um, going around all the edges that it's almost habit that when you go do it, thank you, Tamara, um, that you're gonna put DS or adhesive on all, all the edges. If you do that, you will glue your card shut. <laughs> Let's just say it that way. So what you wanna do is you notice <clears throat> it's only the half that is stuck to the card that gets the DSP. And I, like I said, it seems obvious, but the number of times I've glued part of my card shut because I'm so used to putting DSP on the entire square, don't do that. Oops, that's not how that pulls. Okay, so I've decided on that other card that the bigger one was gonna be on one side and the two smaller ones on the other side. There's no right or wrong. This is all just, you know, whatever you want. So on this one now, I have to decide which two are gonna have DSP on the left, or I keep saying DSP, which two are gonna have adhesive on the left and which one's gonna have adhesive on the right. Or I guess you could have two on the right, one on the left. Doesn't matter as long as they're opposite. And in this case, for no particular reason, other than the card is naturally doing this, I'm gonna go the opposite way because <laughs> I'm a rebel. Okay, so that's still a yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put the bottom one first. Here, we'll put our little black back on because it holds it down. So I'm gonna lay out my thing. I'm getting my little eighth of an inch border around all my pieces. And I'm doing this so that when I go to put the bottom one on, I've already, I've already got, uh, I've already got the other stuff lined up. Okay, so those two are just gonna kind of hold the card. So I'm gonna do this one first. So I know that I cannot go past here with the adhesive. So using your finger as a mark, when you flip it over, just keep your finger in there. Like I said, I've switched to seal plus, in case you're running the difference. Regular seal has the aqua baby blue looking insert. The darker insert, the baby blue, is the seal plus. So I know that this is, I can't go past here. I'm not screen again. Can't go past here, but I'm gonna stop a little bit short of that just because I don't have to go quite to there and then I, I don't have to worry. And I am doing what I'm do what I would normally do. I'm putting the whole seriously right in the middle. My thing decides to go all the way. I just ran out on that one. Okay. <laughs> so tear and tape it is. So here's the beauty of tear and tape. You can always see how much is left. See how sometimes you can't quite tell. Okay, so in this case, I'm gonna mix and match. <laughs> because I ran out and I don't want to get up and get the other piece and do all of that while you're all sitting there waiting. Okay, so I put my adhesive just in my, oh, it's nice and reflective, you can see, just on my one side. So now put down the side that doesn't have adhesive and line it up in the corner. So if you line up this direction and this direction, and because there's no adhesive, you don't have to worry about it sticking on you and get it straight and get it lined up and now drop the other side down. This is actually makes it much easier. If you have all four sides, as soon as you touch one side down, you're done. Okay, so I did this one. So next, because I'm gonna to try to keep track of what I'm doing, I'm gonna take this one, because these are the two. And again, I can, I can use my little finger as a little positioning tool to tell me that I don't wanna go past here, but I wanna make sure this one also gets the right side. So, because I ran out of the other tear and tape, you're gonna watch me, or, Seal plus, you're gonna watch me with the tear and tape. And we're gonna put some down here. And for whatever reason, I like to try to like <laughs> not make all the corners line up in the same place. I'm pretty sure there's no, I, I mean, maybe if you're building a steel um, skyscraper, it would matter that you didn't line all your corners up the same, but somehow I have it in my head and I like to just figure it'll be a little stronger if all the corners are not exactly the same. So I'd like to kind of, stagger them around. Okay, so now we have the top one, which I'm gonna have to move closer because I don't want to see squat otherwise. So again, we're gonna take our top. The other reason we're doing this is if you wanna get equal spacing, if you do the top and the bottom and then you center the middle, it works. But it's also just easier to keep the two sides together. So again, I'm doing spacing on this side and spacing on this side. And I can put this thing down all I want because there's no glue on this side. I'm going to line it up so I have the same spacing as on the bottom. And then I can drop that down and away we go. So now I have the two pieces and I just have to do this one. Now this one I have to remember to go on this side. I put my fingers on this side so I remember what I'm doing. And again, because I've done enough of these now, 
I know roughly where I'm starting and stopping, but it's basically, I mean, halfway is what's going to be there. So just, you know, stick a little bit back from halfway. You should be golden. I'm also just estimating the length of piece of tear and tape I need. And uh, you could just line it up like this, but. Okay, I'll show you how to fix that because I went right over top of the other one. Okay. Tarrant tape stuck to my finger. Just a minute. Oh, I'll get it stuck to something else. There we go. So it's not a big deal that I overlapped, but before you put full pressure on this one, just partially peel up the other piece. Then put it down. Then you won't have any problem with the fact that you went too far. So we're going to peel these little backings off again. I finally started, I've been using my little piercing tool forever, but I finally started using this um, take a pick tool or I can't help but call it the pick your nose tool, but the take a pick tool, which has a little gummy end for the or putty end for like adhesives and or picking up little pieces or shifting things in. And I'm, um, I'm quite actually liking how much bigger it is than the paper piercer, which I never thought I would. That's why I didn't use it at first because it was so much bigger. And now I like it better for that simple fact. Um, it's weird. I'm weird. Where are we kidding? Okay, so now, I guess I don't need this anymore. So now we're going to put this one in. So because because we've got our, our top and our bottom piece, now all we have to do is basically just line up on this one side. And as it turns out, I actually did pretty good on lining these up. Um, and then put this one in the middle. And I'm using the gluey ends because I've got all the other pieces done. So this one I just want to stick right down. The gluey end. How, how's that for good English? I'm using the end with the adhesive. So there we go. We've got my little triptych scenery thingy, and I'm gonna. You're just gonna have to wait um, because I didn't cut any of my die cut or get any of the pieces out because of all that stuff I mentioned earlier that was making me just about miss my time. But you know what? Honestly, this DSP is so nice that even just like this, I'm just like, ooh. And then again, you can't go wrong with the wah 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 of the opening and closing of the car. So as I explained on the first one, you will see the finished product. Um, here, I'll show you. It's all nicely lined up there. It's actually pretty impressive. I have to remember, stop using dark colors. I do love the dark colors, but stop using dark colors in, in, um, in videos because it's really hard to see anything. So this one, you can see a little better. There's my eighth of an inch. It's not quite an eighth of an inch in here. Um, that's okay though. And then it's a different layer. So. As I mentioned at the offset, I left these nice long things here. And so now every time I open and close this card, they are in the way. So put them somewhere else. Or like I said, in my case, I think I'm just going to put a couple little pieces of glue down so they stick like this. So they quit getting in the way of my opening and closing of my card. And if you were going to put, so on this one, my, my, my just regular fold card, uh, because the card's opening like this, right? It does not matter that I put this thing spanning two different things. Which like I said, I partially did it because I wanted to put it in between the lines, but also because I didn't want to cover the bird up and I wanted to cover the other one up. There's always a reason. So in this one, place your stuff wherever you want. It doesn't matter so much. On this one, it does. If I put this label down here, half the label is going to be sticking off, half the label is going to be in, and every time I go to close it, the label's in the way. So if you're going to do a bunch of die cuts, which yes, Tamara, do you notice I did not load this card up with die cuts? Look at me going for the simple life. Partially time, but nonetheless, um, keep keep your embellishments. Keep your actually speaking of embellishments, keep all your stuff in the. Uh, oh, put them on the other one. The embellishments that we got with the new um, blessings from home suite. I want to call it, but actually, I will call it that. I just don't know if that's actually what it is called. <laughs> um, has the has white and gray and vanilla and black. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop a few little uh, embellishments on these other panels, but just make sure that whatever you do, you keep it to the panel so that it does not get in the way of, oh, thank you, of the opening and closing. And like I said, if dark ones plan ahead and actually put the right piece. So there we go. There's your tri-fold, or sorry, your tri-panel, fun fold card, and a sneak peek of the layout for Miss the Monday. Um, please do odd numbers. Oh, odd numbers. Um, you know what? It took me a second, but I caught up. Um, Donna, I have loved the number three. 
I can't actually remember his last name, but since Rob in high school who played hockey and wore number three, um, and I thought number three is my lucky number. So that's why I've always picked number three. I have always thought when you're doing stuff, it has to be in threes. That's why like this is in threes. I'm sure you could do it in fours, but earlier when I said, if you wanted to, you could probably do five skinny strips. I wouldn't do four. I mean, it would work with four, <clears throat> excuse me. You'd have like two here and then two here. It would work, but I would do five. I would do three or five. I would never do an even number. Uh, I've always liked triangles. I think that has something to do with the number three. Or maybe it's just because I'm odd and so I can relate. <laughs> one never knows. But yes, I will probably, uh, because this is a little fuller with things, I will probably put one down here and two up here. Just as soon as I can find them. I, mean, I have them on my desk, but I don't uh, I don't know where they actually slid down into my... I have a box of bling here. It's got all sorts of stuff in it. But somehow I have misplaced them. Did I use them last night? Nope. Okay, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna finish this, sorry, I'm gonna finish this card up. Oh, I just like said, this DSP is so awesome and it just looks so nice. Uh, I'm gonna finish this up, just put like I said, this a little bit here, a little bit of sediment, where we go. I might have some birds on it, you never know. But if you are interested, uh, check out my picture of a table runner that I posted on my Monday challenge yesterday. Here's one of my cards from it. I have a few more in mind that I'm going to make that I will post on Friday. But uh, join in the challenge, uh, either by making a Monday challenge card or by making your own fun, full triple panel card and uh, posting it when I post mine, because I would love to see everybody else's creations. So thanks, everybody, for joining me and for uh, hanging out with all the math. Look, Tamara, you have to go back and watch the beginning of the video, because because the rabbit hole that Tracy went down involves making all of these different panels and all of these different measurements. <laughs> there you go. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy uh, fun folding. Take care, everyone. Bye.